Soil Conservation Service was involved in this project from 2012. When it first came to this site, it uh, was surrounded by security fence with skull and crossbone warning signs. There was a very large stand of dead melaleucas, one hectare sitting in the middle of the wetland. There was not much in the way of wildlife. It was overgrown. It was a toxic site. This was a site that was contaminated and it was one of the top 10 sites here in New South Wales. The North Coast Public Health Unit was very keen to see it remediated and were making comments and discussions with the other regulators for almost a decade to help encourage this site to be remediated. It was our understanding that it was the most contaminated site in the state and it was sitting in the midst of a seaside town um, and it had been closed off to the community for decades and it was a real blight on the landscape. This is a really significant project for, for the Soil Conservation Service. You know, looking back over nearly 80 years of history, in terms of the scale of this, this is probably three times bigger in terms of cost than anything we'd ever taken on before. This was a $10 million remediation project and involved over 250 suppliers and contractors all cooperating to achieve the, the goals. There was uh, contaminated water issues, there was fauna, fauna protection issues, there was occupational health and hygiene requirements which were very, very strict to ensure our workers were not contaminated with uh, arsenic, uh, antimony, mercury, lead, cyanide and chrysilic acid. Being a state significant project, the Soil Conservation Service had to work in partnership with Crown Lands to deliver a best practice solution. It was a very high profile project with uh, many stakeholders uh, interested in its outcome. So with this, we had to uh, implement uh, the latest technology, including XRF uh, metal detector guns, GPS guided machinery, pioneering water treatment technology, and low ground bearing pressure um, heavy machinery using flooding excavators. All of these components worked very, very well to, to create a, a successful outcome with low risk to the environment and low risk to our workers. The project was located very close to residents. We had a preschool, uh, a motel, and many residents along Hillside Drive, some as close as 15 metres from the boundary. So Soil Conservation Service had to work very closely with those um, stakeholders. I was really concerned about the dust and the children with their asthma and just the effects of so much dust around but we had a dust monitor here for months on end, actually showed how much dust was around and the trucks were really good with watering down the road to keep the dust down. They had the street sweepers in and as far as I was concerned they did an excellent job. Made such a difference to this area. We notice it now with the, uh, the people visiting the, the site. The project was completed in 18 months and uh, later uh, another six months spent converting into a, a parkland. Uh, with access track and boardwalk, which is now open for the general public to use. Soil Conservation Service has taken this site from a contaminated wetland, excluded from the public, and delivered a wonderful community asset. I absolutely love the wetlands and so many locals come and visit. It's a, a regular spot now for the walkers. They walk along the road and they always go around the wetlands. You know, in history it was the dumping ground and so this has been a you know, I know as a teacher that this is a, is a great thing for me uh, to bring kids to talk about, you know, and, and, and to be able to rehabilitate somewhere which was so toxic is, and to then see what we see today is, is, a, is an absolute massive win for the community. I'd really like to commend all the agencies that have come together. Uh, this has been an incredible task. This has been an investment of almost $10 million from the New South Wales Government. And today we see boardwalks, we see walkways, we see plantings that have taken place and it's about rehabilitating this site. We're seeing the native bird life coming back into this area and importantly, it's important for future generations that we've protected this site. Now that we've got it fixed, now we've got this magnificent boardwalk, it's just another one of the incredible destinations that Yurunga has. And everyone in the community that's uh, already had a chance to walk on it is saying this is amazing. And I think in terms of delivering what we have here, we've probably fair to say we, we have set the standard and um, you know, we've achieved something here we can be proud of and you know, generations will enjoy in the future.